on Donny FL. Donny FL. It's the Emperor Silencer for the Blitz. So it looks like they did. They fastened it this for me. New Silencer, the Emperor. Okay. Donny FL. It's empty, it looks like. It is empty. Okay. And what's in this packet? Because on the YouTube, people try to put this in. Oh, look, there's a cap. I'm not sure what the cap is for. Maybe it's from the extra parts when you put two silencers together. Ask Donnie to put this together for me before it ships out so I don't have to assemble it. And he did. Thank you, Donnie. Thank you, Donnie. Oh my god, look at that. Look at that. So this is two piece. Looks like the extension. Okay. It says Emperor right there. Okay, by Donnie FL. Air rifle. Air gun use only. Uh, this is the six inch extension. It's empty. There's nothing in it. There's not even a bevel. So I guess, and this is the one with the bevel in it, all tightly packed. I guess this is to help to contain the noise. I'm not an expert on this. So the gun would have to be this long. So we'll assemble this down the road. And it mainly just want to show. So 22 caliber. Look like this piece that goes to here should fasten into this. It sure does. So you can see through this. It's a hole, far end. One size bigger, so it will clear it without clipping the baffles. Which is great. Can't wait to use this. Thanks, Donnie. And we will try to see if we can make the quietest fully automatic machine gun, basically, in the world. First thing first, if I roll the gun back, okay, going to unscrew this, just hands unscrew. So this is the piece what it looks like. There's a little knob. Here's a spring. And pull the spring out. And it looks like the spring is held by this piece. Okay? It is a fully automatic gun, so I think that's how they uh they cycle the um, fully automatic. Okay, this is from Donnie. Piece that goes in there. And this is where the silencer goes. Ooh, it looks like it's slightly different at the receiving end. Let me see if I put a spring in there. Okay, the spring fits perfectly. So, but it is shorter. So the spring's supposed to sit. Let me just stick it back in. If you look, spring's supposed to sit a little further away. And down needs a little more recessed. So I don't want this to have any difference during recycle rate and the spring rate. So I think what I'm gonna do, let me see if I have a bolt, okay, this. All right, that's about the same size. So let's see if it fits. Okay, it does. So if I put a bolt in here, it should fit. I think what I need to do, I believe what I need to do is to clean the bolt, okay. I'm going to apply a little bit of alcohol. Okay, I'm gonna clean the one side of the bolt. I should just clean both sides of the bolt. Okay. Grab a little super glue. Go inside of this piece. and drop the bolt in. There's a little movement on the bolt. Even the hole is it identical. I just want to be able to sit in the middle so it doesn't move. So it looks like this is perfect size. 
didn't move. Okay, so this is the same bore size as Donnie's silencer. I'm going to let this thing sit. Screw this thing back in. I'm going to let this thing sit so it should give about the same spring rate as the spring is holding back. Okay. If Donnie, if you're looking at this, <coughs> um, I don't mind to get a replacement of this type of design. Uh, just to replace this, it would look like this. But essentially, this will be great. I mean, this works just fine. So, it's alright. Um, I think it's for Hassan. The other Hassan is not fully automatic. So, he wouldn't know that fitment with a spring. So, online, I'll, I'll show the link below. Online, there's a guy who did this. Um, he figured out how to fix or improve all the Hassan bullets without jamming. So, his idea was, there's a lot of weird stuff in here. So what I'm gonna do is exactly what he he show on the YouTube. You can always check out the original video, but this is what I'm gonna do. See all the stuff, gunk, and the extra grease is embedded in here. Okay, this piece is okay. It's not very deep. We're literally talking about that, which right about the spring so you don't really need to do that I mean this is how deep it is in this case it should be fine then I'm going to uh, in this video he used some type of grease I have this uh, dielectric grease which is perfect but what about what we can use for so this is the thing you put on spark plugs it's a grease, but what you need to do is just push very lightly, and I'm going to rub inside the barrel to create a good protectant. Be careful cutting yourself, it's very sharp here, against inside of your finger. Okay, I think that's good. You can tell it's very light grease here, and the thing about this uh, dielectric spark plug one, it's not going to turn into a sticky piece, and it's a high temperature. High pressure, high temperature grease. See all the previous gunk? I got all the air gun. So now, this thing should fit good. Yep. Okay. So during the spring cycling rate, this should work just fine. Put some of those grease here. From the piece. Okay. So we we'll leave that there. And see all the previous gunk came out of the Hassan factory. This this gun has never been fired once. If you ask me why are you doing this, you haven't fired this gun yet. Well, the issue is I know it's gonna jam. Everyone's gun jammed, especially this one, uh, this model, because it's fully automatic. So instead of breaking it, fire it, wait for it break, send it back and come back and I do this. I just gonna do this prior to I even breaking it. Did a lot of research. I, I just feel this is the best way to approach this angle. Okay. So I, next thing to do, let me uh, pop this guy open. Um, also grab the tool from from the gun. This is the tool from the gun. You fit here. A lot of people did review. They didn't know this what this tool was for. So basically, you turn it here all the way, and then you put one pallet in here. You put one pallet in here. You see I latch. There's a curvature right here, and once you stick a pallet, anything, once you stick something in. It will lock. It will lock the pallet, and then you can drop all the other pallet pellets in. Okay. But the issue with this, the magazine, is um, the spring ray. Apparently, is not fast enough. So when this spring ray is not fast enough, and the Hassan is firing very fast, you get jammed, especially right up about towards the end. Right here, right here is about the really fast. But when it gets to the end here, it's not happening. So. My idea was, you see that hole here? That's where the spring goes. Okay, you need a special small screwdriver. This is a very tiny one I got a long time ago. I believe this is the size of the screwdriver. The other guy, he just drilled on the other side. I'm curious, I'm wondering if I can spin. This is based on the spring, spring spin. I wonder if I can spin this 
Oh shit. Okay. So this is a spring where it sprints and cocking. I'm wondering I can I can spin this guy. Hopefully I don't break this. Okay. I'm wondering I can spin this guy tighter. So it's my first time. There's a hook to it. You see that hook? So you want to go the other direction. The opposite direction of where the hook is. So it's in. Okay, it is in there. I'm going to line. I'm not sure how many turns I need to do. Let's do a single turn. There's a single turn. Okay, I'm going to do two turns. Instead of drill a new hole, I'm just going to make this spring super tight by making a two turn. A two turn spring. So I have a full rotation ahead. Okay, I figured it out. I got it through. So the hook will look like more of a, more like this. Okay, it's a fairly thick plastic here. So you, there's, there's a, there's a portion has to be flat. And then you hook it through. Okay, I think this is the best way. All right, once, once it hooks through. Okay, it took me a while, I finally got it in. This little piece sticking out. Maybe I can use Dremel to grind it down. But what I, what I do have right now is I can do one. Okay, if I just let it sit freely. If, if it's free, this is whatever the spring was. So if I turn. If I turn this. Oh, I know. I have an like idea. I can push from the back. All right. Push from the back to lift this end up. There we go. And we have one rotation. One full rotation right there. Okay. And I can do another full rotation. Another full rotation. So I gotta have to pass I have to pass this one. So in this case I stick something behind this. Okay, that's not gonna work. Okay. Another idea. The spring is keep losing off on the other end. I'm going to spin it twice. Before I stick it back in. Okay, I successfully did two rotation on this by sticking a piece from the back so this, the spring is a coiling, it won't go out of alignment, at least keep that hole free and that allow you to do two rotations. Now this is super tight. Okay, so if it does three rotation, we should have enough spring rate. Yeah, now let me go ahead and put this back. I was going to drill the hole, but the spring is so loose. There's not really a point. Oh wow, look at that. This is strong. Look at this. Very nice. Very fast. Compared to before. Let me go grab a factory one. Before the modification. Okay, this is brand new. Before modification. Yeah, feels about the same. Let's see. In the end of this, it's okay. Let's try this one. Oh, this is tougher. So, this. Yeah. Actually, it's about the same. Let's see. This piece. Unless they already turned it twice from the factory. Or three times. They have a way to turn it a little more. Because I spin it twice. This is strong. Okay, I think Hassan might already improve the cartridge spring rate. 
because I spin it twice, it's very difficult. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. Looks like the glue is dry. The hole is straight. So I'm going to put this back on there. So it doesn't push back out. And the spring is back in with the same spring rig. Just hang tight, it's fine. And this is where the, the 22 comes out. Now, we don't need this piece anymore, just put it away. Let me zoom out, Let's see if I can zoom out. Okay. This is the, the attachment. So I'm going to silencer. Hand tight, it's good. Here's uh, some rubber alcohol. Let's clean this part of the tank. This is an empty carbon fiber tank right now with no air in it. I'm thinking instead you have a hot sun. Donny FL give me this um, sticker. Let's just go ahead and put this sticker over over the hot sun. You work from the middle, and you work your way back, like old vinyls pieces. You lay it down like that, with no bubbles. The extra 16 inch, that is 16 inch right there. 10 plus 6 and 10. So 16 inch, 16.5 inch, uh, 6.5 and 10 inch on top of whatever this gun was. It's almost like a Hitman, a gun from the video game and movie Hitman. Okay. Just for kicks and giggles, the center point of the gun right now is weighted right at this point. So this is where the bottle is, where this bottle is, that's where the weight now is. This, before, even before that, this part almost has no weight. It's just hollow plastic. So uh, Hassan Blitz, the barrel, that's where all the weight is, was. So in turn, this gun was overweighted towards the front. Now it's even more. But by holding right at this point, the gun will balance. Okay. Or an easier demonstration, where I, my finger is right now. The gun is well balanced at this this point. Just one finger. So for the action here, I'm debating which type of oil do I use. Do I use a silicone oil? Do I use a dielectric grease? Or I use a hair buzzer oil? Uh, I think I might use, I gotta try at least with a hair buzzer oil because I know this is a high frequency oil so it should hold majority of what we need to do I'm gonna play on the bow action a little bit, not too much like the instruction said I'm gonna play some at the lever and I believe what I was told, at least on the research, this is the biggest part of Hassan jamming is because this friction right here. And you can tell the amount of grease is being implied by the factory. They put a lot of grease just right here, so I think this is safe to say part of the problem. And I think they might already fixed it. Because there's a tons of grease on there, but it's very hardcore grease. Those um, gear, I'm not even sure it's a gear grease. Just keep, uh, just, just grease, I guess. So this is a very fine, fine grease, fine lubricant I'm putting on this. Okay. 
see how dry this is. Uh, and now applying oil to the barrel. I'm only doing this for the bolt action to reduce friction. You can tell from the, the wear of the metal discoloration. Okay. Wow, this is very tough to pull. It's almost like AR-15. Not AR-15, I mean AK-47. My AK I had. And let's apply a little bit of grease. Lubricant, oil lubricant. Right where the bolt action is. This is for when you buy a hair buzzer. Then you get this, the hair buzzer travel a few hundred RPMs, I mean a few thousand RPMs a minute. So I know this oil will work and will not discolor or gum up. That's the reason I applied this particular oil. I'm not sure if we can buy this, but also I'm not sure this is exactly the same as the silicone oil. Could be identical. But I'm going with my gut instinct. The most durable oil I have here, lubricant, is this piece. You drop here and there, not too much. Okay, I'm gonna cycle this thing three times. Much easier to cycle, so much more easier to cycle. Before I couldn't, almost have a hard time to pull this back and forth. Lock, click. Let's do this again. The bolt action looks good. And I think there's one place I need to place the oil. Let me see if I can get the camera backwards. There's a bolt in there where the pin, or just putting oil on the pin to get the barrel. So now I gotta put a oil where the bolt is. One or two drop with the actual bolt, which attached to the pin. Like I said, this is a brand new gun. And I've been fired before. And with my gunsmith skill back in the real guns, I can tell there's something wrong with this action. It's very, very hard. I mean, it's harder than my AR, not AR, AK. So with that fixed, now it's much easier to pull the action. Okay, dry fire twice, it's air gun, so I don't think it matters that much. There's no, it's not a chamber. There's no pin strike, it's just a piston striking forward. And it looks like we might just have enough grease at this point. Cycling straw the gun, this should work out really well. I highly doubt this will jam at all. Okay, so this is what I did. So two things, three things I did. This lubricant, I wind this twice, and I also fixed the spring by taking out the extra grease and putting in the nicer grease for lubricant. This should prevent this gun to jam according to the internet according to other users this gun's been out for about a year i've been wanting to get this gun the first month it came out but so much jamming problem and i think people figured it out and this is my fix okay okay something about when they machine this piece there is can you hear this this bolt joint is not smooth it's almost like a razor blade 
Let's see if I can get to it. This piece right here, this piece right here, it's almost like a razor edge to it. And it's just flipping. So it's a bowl, but it's flipping up. So when you try to pull this, you cut yourself right at the edge. It's just a machining problem. So, I'm going to fix that with a dermal. Mm, much better. Yeah, I was cutting my finger just to try to pull the bolt. I just gotta clean this up with an air spray. So I'm about to do the changeover from the gamma break break barrel to the PCP Hassan Blitz. Gonna move the ATM scope to the Hassan Blitz. As for the silencer, that's Donny FL FL silencer. This is my homemade silencer. Homemade silencer is a little smaller. That's 16 inch on the top for the Donny. This is my homemade. And it's just a tube. It doesn't really do much, but what it does is direct all the noise towards the front. So the neighbor on the two sides won't hurt them as much, but the person in the front will. And this is the whisper quiet portion of the gamo. So it's already fairly quiet. Let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do right now is take out this handrail. And just pop it. It's a very cruel design. You either slide forward or backwards. Let's try to slide backwards. And the whole thing comes off. So for many of you worry about how you should, can take this off, it's fairly simple. It's basically work by sticking this thing in here on this pin tail rail railing. Okay, I'm going to put the ATM nice scope on. Okay, I fix it. It's super tight on there. There's a little rubber seal right here. That's the sandwich. Help to hold the magazine. Together. So once you have that piece in good, this thing doesn't really move or go anywhere. Okay? Okay, this is the ATM's night vision. You can tell the way I'm trying to do is go between the machine and the front of the scope and go to this gap. But there's tons of gap. This is a one inch riser from ATM. So you can literally go anywhere. It won't. And because the magazine sliding straight in from the side, so there's tons of clearance. Okay, so you don't have to worry about how you're gonna do your riser. The riser from ATM will work just fine. For the ATM setup, I had this piece go all the way to the front. I didn't touch that from my previous air gun. So this thing slides straight in on the very first gap right here. Overhang and my face, my head will be here, my eye will be right there. So this is my perfect spot for it. Uh, I tried to put it on for a minute. The only thing I feel too much is this cheek rest. So I might get rid of the cheek rest or I can lower as much as I can. It's in the way of where I'm looking at the, the scope. Okay, so this is done. We have a 5 foot long setup. It clears and I lower the head riser it looks good. Now, I think it's ready for filling the air. Okay, after I put about 300 rounds through this gun so far, I didn't film it because I'm having an issue with a uh, uh, cycling issue for the full auto. But on the single semi-automatic shots, it's totally fine. And I end up taking out this nut and tried it again this morning without the nut. Basically, Donnie has this more recessed barrel, thread, cover. 
adapter for the silencer. It didn't make much difference in single shot. In full auto, uh, it worked once in a while. It most of the time does not work. So yesterday, I went ahead and put the factory barrel back in or the cover tip. Um, and it does full, do full auto. Um, machine guns, they have a the cycling issue of cocking this back in the perfect sy sequency. So at this moment, this gun is not very well synced with this setup to do full auto. So it will not cycle in, correct, in the correct rate. So basically, it won't cock back fast enough to punch in the next bullet uh, pellet. It, it's trying to do that, but it doesn't, it just doesn't do it. Um, so I would say, if you're going with a silencer, most likely you won't get full auto. And if you, you can put a stock um, nut back in, then you can't get full auto. It does need to be tuned. You don't really need to send this back to Hassan because it's not their fault. Um, it is just a slight tuning issue between the spring rate in the front and the spring rate in the back here. So two spring rate has to sync perfectly for the full auto to dump the pellets. I would say at this moment, um, I can take it to someone locally for them to take the gun apart and adjust the power level in the back, give a little more power in the front, or I can mess with the front spring rate either to reduce or increase so the cocking back motion will work a little better. Also, I realized when this thing dropped below 200 PSI, or 200 bar, sorry, not PSI, 200 bar, even the single shot might have an issue when you have a silencer on. It won't cycle correctly, so you'll need to cock it back like a regular PCP gun every shot, okay? Uh, otherwise, it's a great gun. I mean, I, I, I love this gun, so I have to mess with it. If I figure out how to get a sequency without opening the gun, just play with the tip in the front with different length of um, the spring or even different poundage of the spring to see if I can get a gun cycle correctly. I believe I can probably get a stiffer spring in the front so I get more motion backwards during cycle. We'll see. I can order four different poundage of spring and try those first. Thanks for watching and happy shooting.